The Nissan Maxima has long been called the four-door sports car. It's been a good alternative for someone who's looking for a sporty sedan with plenty of luxury, but doesn't want the price or the prestige of one. Redesigned just last year, the Maxima sees the addition of Apple CarPlay, but otherwise it's unchanged for 2017. So let's go ahead and check out and take a closer look at this 2017 Nissan Maxima Platinum. Now since the Nissan Maxima is the flagship sedan for the brand, it was also one of Nissan's very first vehicles to introduce the boomerang type look and I really do love it on the Maxima here. You'll also find this on the Murano as well as the Sentra and the Altima too. But I really do love the sporty looks of the Maxima here and one styling touch I love of this vehicle is the C-pillar. It's very stylish especially it's part blacked out too and then you also do have some nice styling touches such as these LED daytime running lights and then you do get LED headlights on our top-of-the-line platinum model here and I really do love these 18 inch machined aluminum wheels now here goes the key fob design for the Maxima it's your typical Nissan smart key you have your remote engine start your lock unlock to release your trunk and then your panic alarm this color of the Maxima is known as the pearl white and I really do love this color here. It really glistens in the sunlight. You also do have smart key access on the driver's door and the front passenger door. And you have chrome exterior door handles. And you do have a full on black leather interior. Power driver's seat with power recline and power lumbar. All right, now stepping on inside of the Maxima here, as you can see, it's a very lavish looking interior since we do have the top of the line platinum model and there's stitching everywhere inside of this vehicle and a lot of the materials feel rich and premium and expensive. This is not a cheap feeling looking car or a cheap looking car either. Very impressed with this interior here and it beats out many infinities when it comes to its design. Now you do have push button ignition of course, just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to start. And what you're hearing there is a 3.5 liter V6. Now you have a fully leather wrapped steering wheel with a flat bottom design. Really nice looking steering wheel here. Coming to your transmission, we have a CVT automatic transmission. You also do have manual shiftability, but no paddle shifters here. If you want to get paddle shifters, you have to actually go for the SR model. Now, Nissan actually added seven stimulated gear ratios to add a regular automatic transmission feel. So sometimes this doesn't feel like a CVT automatic. Now, putting the vehicle into reverse will actually tilt down the mirrors and it displays your surround view monitor and then of course you have a rear view camera with guidance lines and trajectory and then you also do have a top down view and then you have cameras on the side mirrors which is nice so overall I really don't think you're going to have a hard time parking this vehicle and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the headlights and we also do have fogs and the hazards let's go ahead and check out the exterior of the vehicle Driver's window and the front passenger window are fully automatic. Let's go and pop up the hood and check out the engine bay. Heated exterior mirrors with LED turn signal indicators. Really love the styling details of the Maxima. Coming up front, you have LED headlights with LED daytime running lights, front parking sensors, and halogen fogs. Powering the Maxima here is your only engine option, but it's a pretty potent 3.5 liter V6 that produces 300 horsepower at 6400 RPM and 261 pound-feet of torque at 4400 RPM with EPA estimates being a 
pretty healthy. 21 in the city and 30 on the highway. That's quite impressive for this size of vehicle. But you can thank that to that CVT automatic transmission. That's why it earns pretty good fuel economy numbers here. Overall, this powertrain does provide a pretty good amount of power with respectable fuel economy. However, if you are looking for more power out of a large car, then you'll want to look at the Chrysler 300 or the Dodge Charger because they do come with V8 engines. However, this Maxima only has a V6 here. Pricing of the Maxima starts at the S model and it does come pretty well equipped with a dual zone climate control, keyless ignition and entry, and cloth upholstery. That starts at $32,560. The SV starts at $34,540. The SL, $37,040. The Sporty SR model starts at $37,820. And then the very luxurious Platinum starts at $39,990. Now, competitors of the Maxima, you're looking at vehicles in the large car segment. This includes the likes of the Toyota Avalon, the Chevrolet Impala, Dodge Charger, Chrysler 300, and there's a decent amount of vehicles in this segment. It's certainly not as competitive as it once was. However, the Maxima is certainly one of the sportiest vehicles that you can get in the class. I really love the black pillars here. Gives it contrast to the Maxima's exterior design. Coming to the rear of the vehicle, you have LED illuminated tail lights, and then you also do have dual exhaust tips and rear parking sensors, and an LED third brake light, and a little shark fin antenna. You can also get a rear spoiler if you would like. EPA estimates are looking at 21 city, 30 highway. Total vehicle price is $42,080. And then the government five star safety ratings hasn't been rated yet. But the final assembly point for this vehicle is in Japan. You have all of your full power accessories, power windows, door locks, power mirrors, and chrome interior door handles. And we also do have memory seat settings for two people. Now, like I said earlier in the video, the Maxima features a very premium feeling interior, especially with our top of the line platinum. And there's nice stitching everywhere inside of this vehicle, like on the upper door panel here. And everything is soft touch on the panels and then on the dashboard too. Build quality is also excellent. Everything feels pretty sturdy inside of here there's no creaks of the panels or anything like that there's no gaps overall very impressed with this interior from Nissan now I love the steering wheel design that we get on the new Maxima here it's very sporty feeling especially with the flat bottom design and then also coming over here we have your steering wheel mounted audio controls and then you also do have your Bluetooth phone controls over here and your voice recognition. We also do have adaptive cruise control here. But it's a pretty beefy feeling steering wheel and it has that sporty feel to it. Coming up here, we also do have an auto dimming rear view mirror with garage home link. Sunglass container. LED map lights. SOS safety connect. And a full panoramic sunroof gives the cabin a much more open, airy feel. Headliner also doesn't feel cheap inside of here. Feels pretty high quality. The seats in the Maxima are very comfortable and they do have pretty good side bolsters here in case you're going around sharp corners. But I really do love the thigh support too, very comfortable and these seats are the zero gravity seats inspired by NASA, which Nissan loves to use in a lot of their vehicles. And I really do love the design to them too. Really nice looking, very impressed, and I would certainly take an extended road trip inside of the Maxima. As far as visibility goes inside of the Maxima, it's okay. It's not the best vehicle in the large car segment. It is better than the Chrysler 300 though. Um, the A-pillars aren't too 
wide and they're actually pretty thin to be honest but I wish there was just a little bit more glass area on the side windows and when you get to the C pillar um, it's a pretty big one and there's not a whole lot of glass area when it comes to the rear windows um, visibility could be better but it's better than some other cars in the large car segment Coming right here, you also do have your two different driver selectable modes. You have a normal mode and a sports mode. The sports mode will tighten up the steering and it will change the throttle response. And then we do have some of your controls for the main head unit here. You have your center console lid, which is nice and soft touch and stitched. And you have a pretty large center console with a 12 volt power outlet. Pretty nice. And then you also have a power tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And right here you will find your trunk release, your traction control off button, your heated steering wheel, and your rear sunshade, which comes on the Platinum model here. Now one styling detail I love about the Maxima is this nice mahogany wood trim, as you can see. And it looks real, and many other vehicles have that glossy, fake, plasticky looking like wood. And this wood actually looks real, it doesn't look anything like that. Now you also do have an 11 speaker Bose sound system in this vehicle. And the audio quality is pretty crisp and clear. Vision. Too bad everyone can't afford LASIK. Well guess what, there's a company that agrees with you. Pretty nice um, sounding system. All right, now coming to the gauges in the instrument cluster, we have a pretty traditional looking setup overall. And we have a big old seven inch driver assist display here. And it's all controlled by the buttons on this steering wheel, of course. And this is your home screen right here. You have a digital speedometer and then it shows you your direction of travel. You also do have your digital clock and then your exterior temperature readout. And then over here, you have, shows you what radio station is playing and then you could change your audio source from here if you would like, which is nice. And then you have your direction of travel again. And then your drive computer. You can reset if you like. Shows your average fuel economy, all that good stuff. And then right here, you also do have a little bar of your fuel economy. Then you have your driving aids. Like the blind spot detection. Then your tire pressure monitoring. Then you have a digital speedometer right here, and then it shows you your power. And then any warning messages, settings that you could change from here, like the driver assistance. You could customize the display if you would like. Then you have your vehicle settings, maintenance, your TPMS, and then your unit language. And then you could do a factory reset if you would like. Overall, I love this little driver assistance display. It's a pretty nice looking system too with good graphics and good rendering. We also do have automatic rain sensing windshield wipers, which is nice. Coming down here, you will find your climate controls, which we do have dual zone automatic climate control. You have your temperatures right here on the dials and then your fan speeds and then your different zones. Pretty easy to figure out here with big knobs and big buttons. And I love how it's facing towards the driver. It's ergonomically correct. Then you have your front window defroster, rear window defroster, and then your recycling modes. Now one thing I love about the Maxima and many other newer Nissans is that when you're actually filling this vehicle's tires up with air pressure, the vehicle will actually honk the horn to alert you that you filled it up with the right PSI. And I wish many other vehicles would do that. It's a really nice feature that Nissan has nowadays. Coming to the main head unit in the infotainment system, this is an eight inch color display here. And I really do love this head unit from Nissan here. And I really prefer if they use this head unit over their older systems that they have in many of their vehicles, as well as many Infinity vehicles too. Um, it's just a more modern looking setup and it's more intuitive and user friendly. But this is your home screen here. And you could swipe like this for your different menus too. And then coming right here to your audio, your different audio sources do include pretty much all of the norm, AM, FM, Sirius XM, satellite radio, your CD player, USB port with iPod connection, Bluetooth streaming audio, and your auxiliary input. But don't expect to find an SD card slot. Some of 
some vehicles do have that feature. Coming to your phone, you can hook up your Bluetooth phone via your call history and then have an integrated dial pad as well. And then you also do have a text messaging function too, which is nice. Coming over here, you have your info, shows your Nissan Connect services, and then you have your Sirius XM stocks, traffic, movie listings, fuel prices, sports, and your weather. You can also do where am I, and it shows you your destination, or your location, and then you have your GPS position too, and then you also do have the Apple CarPlay from Nissan now, and that's a new feature for 2017 for the Maxima. Then you have your map, and your map you can zoom in and out with this dial right here, which is nice. I really wish that many other vehicles would do that with their touch screens. That's a really nice feature. And the map quality is a little scrunchy, it's a little dated looking, um, I have to say, but it does show you your points of interest and things like that. And then you can enter in your destination by voice or by manually putting it in. But the map quality certainly needs to get updated. It's just a little behind the times in terms of its rendering and its graphics. And then this is where you can enter in your destination by your nearby points of interest or your address book. And you have your settings. You can um, do your Bluetooth settings, navigation, your display, clock, your sound, of course, all that basic stuff. Then you have your Nissan Connect services, Apple CarPlay settings, many different settings that you could change for the system here. Overall, really nice head unit here. It's very user friendly, I have to say. However, um, really need to change the map quality on the navigation system but otherwise this is a really nice system here now the Maxima somewhat lives up to the name of being a true four-door sports car but I really think Nissan was really trying to compete with the Toyota Avalon and the Chevrolet Impala here because I think the Maxima offers a really nice balance between decent ride comfort and decent handling too. Now it isn't the sportiest car to drive out there but it certainly feels somewhat nimble behind the wheel and somewhat precise. It offers a decent amount of driver engagement and it's one of the better handling vehicles in the class but it kind of sucks that the Maxima isn't real wheel drive either. It is front wheel drive so a lot of real wheel drive cars are actually better to drive than front wheel drive cars and the Maxima does provide a very smooth and a very comfortable ride quality. It's very subdued and it's very quiet inside of here too, especially at highway speeds and it soaks up uh, rough road pavement very well. But the Maxima is certainly not the sportiest sedan out there, but it's one of the sportier large cars in its class. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the Maxima. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle. Interior quality is really good back here too with the nice premium stitching and all the panels are soft touch Which is nice, but back here. There's an okay amount of leg room um, There are roomier cars in the large car segment like the Chevrolet Impala and Toyota Avalon But it's right on par with the Dodge Charger and Chrysler 300 in terms of rear seat leg room Headroom is also okay back here and you do have dual, dual map pockets rear air vents and we also do have rear adjustable headrests as well as a rear center armrest with couplers. And you can use this part as a little cell phone holder or something like that. The seats back here are also pretty comfortable. Still have that very unique kind of design to them, which is nice. All right. Decent amount of trunk space back here. So the 2017 Nissan Maxima may not be the sportiest sedan to drive, however it's certainly one of the best large cars that you can buy. With its very impressive exterior and interior design, loads of luxury and technology features, as well as its great powertrain with respectable fuel economy. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.